responsibility of the administration and people like yourself to help on your end to mend these fences? Yeah, I think going back, you look at every administration, you're always going to have a little bit of friction uh, between the press corps and the White House. Uh, we've certainly seen that escalate uh, in this administration. I think that there is certainly responsibility on both sides. We have to be forthcoming. We have to be honest. That's our obligation to the American people. But it's also journalist obligation to present facts, not opinions. It's the American people's ability to get to take those facts and decide where they want to come down on an issue. To me, a good news story is if all the facts are presented and you don't know which side the the author of that story is on. Right. And I think we need to get back to a little bit a little bit less editorial comments from the media and a little bit more uh, fact delivering to the American people. But my clarification here is that when, when he refers to the media, that's a massive group of people. Technically, we're media, there are journalists. I feel that by, by specifying when there's something wrong, I think that is a responsibility of the administration because the problem is you have an American people that are now distrusting because this has been a consistent talking point of his and the administration's. It's dangerous because the media is here for a purpose. It has a very important historical role. And when people that don't know the difference in these mediums are sitting out there going, oh, medium, fake news, fake news, you are kind of taking away a check and balance but of it's, society. It's also very dangerous for the media not to live up to the responsibility that they have, and that is to actually present factual information. But I mean, when a lot of times to, I sit when in one a room. person does it, I think you need to say, we read this article, and yeah. that is problematic because there are like thousands of us, and we can only be, do our part individually. Yeah. So when you call out all of us each time, we take the fall for when we do do backup research and yeah. we do present information, you're making us all take that fall. Well, and I think that goes both ways. I mean, the media often characterizes all. Republicans, all conservatives, all Democrats. I think that that happens on, certainly on both sides when you take uh, those generalities, and that certainly I think is a, a give and take, not just from the administration, but also from the news media. Uh, I is think the media supposed to not report on the fact that 95% of what he says is a lie? Well, that's. That, that, is a, a, that is, you are doing exactly what we're talking about and pushing a false narrative. No, it's not. 95% of what the president says is fact. not a lot. It's from politi well, fact, from Politico. Politi politi it's not just Times. the dreaded New York Times. It is other, <laughs> other outlets that say it. 5% of his statements are true. 5%. That's just it. it. it and you, I feel for you. I feel sorry for you that you have to go out and defend Every day. And that has been documented. And so as the face of really the, the administration, what do you say to the American people when you have a boss that engages in untruths? Well, I, I, again, I, I completely disagree with the fact that what you're saying is only 5% of that is true. I know that that is simply not accurate, and I think that's one of the dangers that we have right now is we are pushing so many false narratives every day. We're creating false perceptions about the president and, frankly, inhibiting his ability to succeed. I think America should want him to succeed. He is the president whether they voted for him or not, and I think that we have to get behind Yes, we should be championing for you're, his success you're because exactly his success correct. is America's success, and that's you're what we should all want. But you also have to get somebody in the office who recognizes what the truth is. <laughs> and that, I mean, because, I, and I will take you just to, to one, one point that we can all agree on. Where was President Obama born, and is he an American citizen? I think this line. has been pretty well addressed. Well, uh, but, but this narrative, this is what I'm talking about. That's a narrative that went on forever mm -hmm. and really didn't get, he didn't clear it up until after he was in office. So there are those things that we could go back and forth with, but I think it would be helpful <laughs> if he, A, would stick to whatever he's decided. Like, last night he tweeted one thing and then he said something else the next morning and it, it's like, it's like, come on, man! Yeah. You know, it's a lot. It's a lot. I, I don't 
I think what, what, what happened yesterday, I, I, I disagree that that was inconsistent messaging. The point of yesterday, you've got a very intense legal battle, uh, and, and the timeline was not set by Donald Trump. It was set by the courts. A decision was forced to be made yesterday. With DACA. You have, with DACA. With you have DACA. one of two choices. Mm -hmm. You can either let the courts decide, which means the program can mend, uh, like end immediately, which mm -hmm. I think the entire country has agreed that that's not a good thing, mm -hmm. including the president. And, or you can take six months and you can force Congress to actually do their jobs. A lot of people yeah. are protesting Trump Tower. I think they should go pro protest the United States Capitol because those are the people that yes. have the ability to actually make and, laws. And if he and had they come need to out, step up and do their job. If he had come job. out and not said Jeff Sessions that, if he had come out, stood with you, stood Why next to you and that? said... This is, this is just my opinion. If he had stood next to you and said, listen, Congress, you didn't act when you could have acted four years ago, eight years ago. Now I'm demanding that you act. If he stood with you and said that, and he, I'd feel better. But Jeff Sessions didn't say, well, he didn't do it for me. The first step was Jeff Sessions making the legal argument. When President Obama made this decision in 2012, he sent Janet Napolitano. He didn't go out himself no. because that's the first step in the process. He sent the administrator that is responsible for carrying out that duty. That was Jeff Sessions' responsibility. The president put out a very lengthy uh, statement. He'll be out publicly speaking today. There is a process that we're going through, and right now, the part of the process that we're in is for Congress. They've been on a three-week vacation. They should be well for rested. Years. They should for be years ready. They've been on a they have, they should feel ready to Let come me back talk to and Mike. actually Mike. get something done. Mike, you know, both the president and the vice president, I, I think, visited Texas to see the flooding and the, the devastation. And, and this is the first time I think we saw President Trump in that consoler in chief role. And many people felt better about that. The country has been so divided and now we see more uh, closeness. We see Americans mm -hmm. being great. However, on the same day when this devastation is set to strike Texas, he pardons Arizona Sheriff Joe Arpaio. He says he pardons him at, on that day to get better ratings since people would be watching hurricane coverage. <laughs> now, as a former government, a, a governor, would you have chosen that particular moment to pardon arguably one of the most racist and racially profiling officials in, in our country? I, I know Joe Arpaio. I, I do not agree that he's that he a, racist. a racist. No, I do not agree. He's lawless, though. I don't. He's an 85-year-old he man, and he has been a sheriff, and he has enforced the law in his county. But I, I think to your first point, which I hope Several that we can disagree. emphasize. I, I, listen, we're living in a country where everybody disagrees, okay? okay? I, I can't hardly find agreement within my own family sometimes. Fair. It's so divided Fair. and polarized. But what you also mentioned was this was a president who not only did the important job of standing up federal resources to assist in Texas, but then he got criticized for not showing enough empathy. He goes back, he hugs people, and then people are saying, we got to find something to hate this guy for. I mean, I'm, I'm just telling you, the I man the could, is actually he really could take good. a drinking... I don't believe him because he lies so much. No one believes also, anything. Take what he does. That's the problem. What he did in that hurricane relief is what's important. And what he did was ensure that every federal agency was fully engaged in helping those people and then that he was giving attention to it on a personal level. But, folks, look, there's so much Trump hate out here that if he took a drinking straw and sucked out every drop of flood water from Houston and spit it into the Gulf of Mexico... They would have said well, he, he should have spit that. it into the Indian Ocean. I, 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 I have to say to you, you know, I have to say this to you. This is a gentleman who is now going to learn the cost of cutting all of these programs. programs because these are the programs that we needed, and this is why we needed them. So he'll learn, he'll figure it out, because that's what every president does, right? That's what every president does. They figure it out. But I think... He has not done himself a whole lot of good with some of the things he decided to do and how he started all of this. I think that is a lot of what's happening. I actually think happening. that's a great point that I agree with you. He's not looking to better himself. He's making decisions that I think better the American people. Ooh, by making no. government... Wait, wait, oh, what a wait, spin. By wait, wait. making <laughs> government work more effectively and more efficiently I, and using I, resources in a more responsible manner, yeah, I don't think that's that something that we should... Yeah, and they're taxpayer my, dollars. You know, that should be looked at in a go, more We're... We're... Uh, <laughs> we're um, <laughs> We're going to go and come right back, and we're not.
They're coming. The torture continues. <laughs>